Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of how to set up a home IT lab. In the previous video, we looked at the networking side of things and how my Cisco 2611 router was connected to my HP switch and how the network was configured. In this video, I'm hoping to look at how we can install ESXi 6.7 on the actual servers themselves. If you haven't seen the previous video of the topology and how the network is set up, there is a link in the description below. There is also another video on how you can set up a bootable USB so you can install the ESXi 6.7 operating system onto your server. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description below, so please check out both of those videos. So in this video, I just wanted to share with you the actual physical equipment that I'm using. Um, as you can see, I've got a Cisco 2611 router and a HP 2920 switch. Uh, it's a 48 port uh, power over, over Ethernet gigabit switch. And this switch is for connecting to my internal uh, subnet. So I've got three internal subnets as you may have seen in the previous video, if you haven't checked that out. And what I'm doing is I'm using this switch for my internal network and the router is a bridge between my, my internal network, the switch, as well as my home internet, which takes me up to the in, uh, home broadband router, which takes me up to the internet. So the Cisco switch is doing natting between um, the subnets that are coming from my HP switch and anything going out to my home broadband router, which takes me out to the internet. Um, below the switch, we have three QNAP storage devices. Each two of these are 10 terabytes, and I believe one of them is uh, 20 terabytes. I'll double check that once we get to the configuration. Below the QNAP storage devices are my two Dell servers. They are both PowerEdge R720 servers. They both have the Intel Xeon E52640 processors at 2.5 gigahertz each. Each processor has six cores. In terms of internal storage on the servers, one of them has two 600 gig SAS drives and the other one has a 250 SAS drive. I'm not too concerned about the internal storage because I'm only going to be installing the operating system or the ESXi operating system on the internal hard drives. In terms of storing the virtual machines, their configuration files and hard disks and so forth, I'll be using the QNAP uh, storage devices which I'll be connecting to this servers through iSCSI. So that's just the layout of the physical devices that I'm using. You could be using something different um, but in this video, the aim is to hopefully see how we install ESXi 6.7. It should be the same whether you're installing ESXi on a PC or on a rack server or on a tower server, regardless of what you're using to install it. Um, the process for installing ESXi 6.7 on a physical device as well as a virtual device is the same. So that shouldn't really be too much of an issue. So without further ado, let's move on to installing ESXi 6.7 on the server. So the first thing we're going to need to do is plug in our USB stick and then boot up the server. So let's plug that in and let's boot that up. So if we plug it into here, that's plugged in. And then what we'll do is we'll just turn on the power. There we go, that's booting up. So that's just booting up. Once it boots up, what we'll do is we'll press the F11 key. So that can take us to the boot menu and we can then choose to boot from our USB device. Um, your device might be, your server might be different, your PC or whatever you're using might be different. So you may want to find out what key you need to use to select your boot device. So here we are at the boot menu. Uh, what we're going to do is go to BIOS, BIOS boot menu, press enter. That should give us uh, the devices that we're going to boot from. So it should give us the options of devices that we'll be able to boot from. So you've got normal, uh, DVD, and C drive. Now, in terms of C drive, I can go further down and I can use the front USB, which is where my USB device is connected to. If I click on that and press enter, I'm not sure if it's clear from the screen, but there you go, so on the bottom one it says front USB, that's where my USB is connected to, so I'll go down to that and I'll click enter on that, and that should give me the ESXi boot option or bootloader, press enter on that, and that will now start to boot from my ESXi uh, bootable USB which I created, and we can kick off the installation process for ESXi 6.7. 
In the previous video, I did say we're going to install ESXi 7. Unfortunately, ESXi 7 isn't out until May. So for now, we're going to be sticking with ESXi 6.7. There we are. So that's just initializing. And it's given us some information about the server. As you can see, it's a PowerEdge R720. It's got two Intel Xeon processors at 2.5 GHz each. And it's got 128 gigabyte of RAM. So it's more than sufficient. Let's just wait for this process to load. And then we can carry on with the installation. So that's now brought us to the ESXi installation page. We'll press enter to continue. Accept the license agreement by pressing F11. And it's just gonna scan for devices. So it's now detected the devices that are connected to the server. And as you can see on the top one, it's detected the, uh, the hard drive. So I'll press enter on that to continue. And here it says, it says here that the storage device does not contain ESXi 6 or later. Um, so yeah, we're going to press enter to install and we're going to carry on with that. Uh, so we're going to use uh, English uh, United Kingdom. I'll create a password for root. And just confirm the password. Oh, they don't match. So let's go back to this one and retype that again. And go to the top one let's make sure we've got the password correct they have to match right. passwords match fantastic press enter to continue password does not have enough character types okay so i guess we have to add a special character let's add a full stop at the end for both passwords and press enter And that's, this is just the confirmation page to install the operating system on the drive. And we will say, yep, install it. We'll press F11 and that will wipe the disk and prepare the installation of ESXi 6.7. So we'll pause here for a moment and we'll be back once the installation is complete. And that is it. The installation is complete. It's telling me to remove the installation media before rebooting and then press enter to reboot. So I'll remove the USB device and I'll press reboot. I'll press enter to reboot. That's now just rebooting. That's just now booting up the, the operating system. I'll press enter to boot. You may notice there's a sound in the background. Now I've turned on the router and switch, my Cisco router and switch, so I can configure the networking of the operating system. So that's why you hear this loud sound in the background. But yeah, let's just boot into this and then we'll get started with the configuration of the operating system. So as you can see, my host does not have any IP address at all whatsoever. Um, this is because it's not currently connected to the switch at the moment. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm not going to use the IPv6. I'm going to turn that off anyway, and I'll show you that in a second. And I'm going to plug in the patch in the um, cable. So I'm going to connect the Ethernet cable to the server and then into the switch. And I'll assign it a static IP address. And hopefully we can test some of the settings and uh, connectivity. Let's press F2 and we are obviously root and we need to give in, we need to put in the root password that we created. Press enter. So once we log in we can now 
go to the management network, which has obviously got a stat, uh, self assigned IP address. Let's go into that and let's say network adapters. So we've got one network interface connected at the moment. We'll just use that for now, which is VMNet zero. Let's come back out of that. Um, VLANs, I'm just gonna permit all VLANs. Uh, so I'm just gonna say 4095 to allow all VLANs. All right, so all VLANs will be passing through. I've only got four VLANs the default one and three other VLANs which I'll be using for my lab purposes um, VLAN 10, 20 and 30 so for now I'm just letting them all through it's not a problem uh, but you can actually control what VLANs come through to your hosts on there so IPv4 configuration let's go to IPv6 first of all I'm just going to turn this off and say disable IPv6 it says restart required we'll say disable for now we won't restart at the moment uh, IPv4 configuration and here we're going to set our IPv4 statically. Oh, let's go back into that. Press spacebar, select, and then we can start configuring this IP address. So I'm going to use 10.10.0. Uh, let me use 3. Because 101001 10, is the default gateway for my hosts. On this subnet, 10.10.0.1 10, is my default gateway. Oh, sorry, subnet mask, what am I doing there? So the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 to class C. And we'll just do the default gateway, 10.10.0.1, 10, which is my default gateway. And I'll press enter on that. Um, in terms of DNS, I'm going to use my broadband router for that temporarily. I'm going to set up a virtual machine in here with a Windows Server virtual machine, which I'll be using as a domain controller as well as um, another one that I'll be using for uh, DHCP and DNS. So for now, because I don't have that set up, I'm just going to say use the following one. And we'll test that. 192.168.0.1. Dot one. That's my primary DNS, and I can just maybe use Google's one as an alternative. And the host name, I'm just going to change it for now to ESXi1. And I'll press enter on that. So all of that is saved. I'll press escape, it will ask me to save it. I'll press Y for yes. And then what we want to do is, it's going to restart the host. And then what we want to do is just test the connectivity after that. Okay, so we are back. It's rebooted. Let's now test the uh, settings of the. Uh, let's now test the settings of the interfaces. So we want to test the IP address. Put in the password. We just want to make sure that we can get out to other, so we can reach other hosts on the same subnet, as well as possibly reach uh, the internet out on this ESXi host. So, test management network. Yep, we want to do test the IP address of our default gateway. We want to ping the IP, IP address of our external default gateway, which is my home broadband router, and do DNS uh, test as well. So let's see. Yep, that's okay. That's okay. And that's okay. Now, it can't resolve the host name because we don't have a DNS server, as I said. So as you can see at the bottom, 
where the ESXi host name has failed, um, that's fine. Once we set up uh, DNS using Windows Server on a, on a virtual machine and we create the DNS entry for the host name, it will be able to resolve that. So for now, I'm not too fussed about DNS. What I need to be able to do is I need to be able to get to my ESXi host using its IP address, which is 10.10.0.3, and then I can configure it from the web interface and uh, install vCenter server as well as start installing virtual machines, including Windows servers that can hold, that can run as DNS servers and DHCP servers and so forth. So for now, I'm not too concerned about the DNS and resolving the host name. That just needs a DNS server so we can resolve that, and we'll do that in another video. So we are good to go. So that's it for this video, guys. I've installed ESXi 6.7 on the first host on, our, on the first Dell server. I need to do the whole process all over again now on the second server. And once that's done, I can then install my vCenter server appliance and start setting up my lab in terms of installing virtual machines and so forth. The next part after that is going to be in configuring the storage devices and attaching them onto the SXI hosts. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like, please subscribe, please share with your family and friends. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next, in the next video.